Oregon football's next transfer portal target at the defensive end position has put his name in the portal, or at least I hope he's going to be Oregon football's next target, but we'll have to wait and see. And Oregon basketball for Dana Altman has seen his first official departure from the 2021-22 team. Eric Williams announced he is not going to be returning to the University of Oregon, according to a report from the Oregonian. He'll be testing the pro waters. Thoughts and recap on that coming up today on Locked on Ducks. Here we go. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for Locked On Ducks. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster and lifelong Oregon Ducks fan. Thank you for making this your first listen or your first view if you're watching on YouTube every day. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Ducks every single weekday. Like and subscribe, leave a nice comment, all that good stuff. Today's episode brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And I hope Oregon starts its next adventure into the transfer portal with the Maryland defensive end by the name of Damian Robinson. Now, his name is spelled D E M. E-I-O-U-N. It could be pronounced differently. I apologize if it is not. If any of you know how to properly pronounce his name, I'm in the interest of being right, not acting like I know everything. So if it is not Damien, that's just my assumption. If it's something else, by all means, let me know. But for today, we'll roll with Damien Robinson. 6'4", 250-pound defensive end slash edge player. He uh, played for Maryland in his freshman season. was a pretty highly touted recruit. Now, his high school scouting report actually said that he could play defensive end at 250 pounds or outside linebacker at 230 pounds, which is what he was coming out of Quince Orchard High School in Maryland as a senior. Interestingly enough, on the roster for Maryland football in 2021, he is listed as 250 pounds and an outside linebacker. Now, he plays up and around the line of scrimmage either outside as an edge player in a 4-3 or most commonly he was in a 3-4 sub package and he was a stand-up outside linebacker slash defensive end so kind of in that cave on Thibodeau mold I don't know if that's a great comp given that he's not quite as highly tied a recruit wasn't as productive as a freshman as Thibodeau was but that's a pretty darn high bar I think that positionally he compares to another incoming freshman Oregon has Anthony Jones the three-star linebacker slash athlete out of Liberty High School in Nevada. He was one of those early flips for Dan Lanning and this staff. Uh, Was originally committed to Texas, but decided to come to the Ducks. And man, does that ever feel like a lifetime ago? Oh my gosh. That was many, many months ago. A whole different era. No, it was not a whole different era ago. But here's the high school scouting report on, on Robinson coming out of high school when he went to Maryland. And he was a consensus, highly rated four-star linebacker slash edge player. He was the top-ranked player in the state of Maryland and the 35th-ranked player nationally. So pretty big-time recruit that the Terps were able to keep in state. But after one season, he didn't play, I think, as much as he wanted to. And now is looking for a change of scenery. I haven't seen anything that would indicate Oregon is going after this guy. I'm getting on here and saying Oregon should be going after this guy. And here's why. Here's the high school scouting report according to 24-7 Sports. Has length in his frame and offers position versatility as a defensive end or outside linebacker. Exactly what we need. Can bulk up to 250 of play at 230, but play but needs to continue to add strength to his upper body. I agree. Shows fast twitch muscles in ability to get off the snap. Absolutely. Has lower body flexibility to dip shoulder and get around edge to accelerate into the backfield. Remember, that's something I, I said recently. Mel Kuyper said is uh, kind of a knock on Kayvon Thibodeau. He doesn't have that that kind of dip to go go down and around a, an offensive tackle. It's something he needs to work on. That's something that Robinson, not comparing him directly to Kayvon Thibodeau, but that's something he's been able to do since uh, or going back to his high school tape. Has speed to chase down plays from behind. Shows off-ball quickness. Has to work on stacking and shedding blocks and being able to anchor when the ball is run at him. Has ability to play immediately at a high-level program. First-round NFL draft potential. Yeah, that's a guy I think Oregon should be going after on a team that doesn't really have 
the the defensive end or edge position solidified. And, and one th- one thing they talked about on there, and I, I've watched some some film and highlights on him. I definitely think this is still the case has to work on stacking and shedding blocks and being able to anchor when the ball is run at him. What, what they're saying there is when you run an outside zone or, or a toss or something like that, you have to be able to set the edge and not give the halfback an easy lane outside. And to do that, you can't let the guy who's blocking you turn you back inside. He could get a little bit better at that, but he's strongest when he's rushing the passer, which is, as you know, for those of you that are here with me on YouTube or podcasts every day, and I thank you for being one of those many people out there, I, I'm just concerned about how Oregon's going to generate pressure. I think Dorless has got a lot of potential, but he's going to have to do it without Kayvon Thibodeau, and that's a hard thing to do because Thibodeau attracted a lot of attention last year. So this is a guy who who knows how to get after the passer, has the physical tools to be able to do it when you look at him. You can't quite pinpoint what position he is but that's what makes him such an intriguing prospect. That's why coming out of high school, the, the scouting report was, yeah, he has first round NFL draft potential. Now, he didn't live up to all the hype per se in 2021, but it looks like he didn't play as much as he was expecting to. So I think that his ceiling, I, I, I think it's much higher than what he showed this past season. He appeared in 13 games. He started one. He was mostly a sub package guy where he came in kind of in certain situations but he wasn't a regular player for the Terps, uh, which is a turtle, I believe. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a turtle. Uh, 13 games, one start, 19 tackles, two and a half tackles for loss, two sacks a season ago. He, he's capable of standing up, but he's also capable of putting a hand in the ground to get after the passer. And, and that's the exact position, as I've said, Oregon is looking for. He's explosive off the edge. He's got a great. This is my personal assessment of watching, you know, what film I could find on him from his freshman season. He he looks like he belongs at a power five program and, and is a guy who can be a playmaker. Now, the production might not have been there the way Maryland was hoping when when they got a top 50 player in the country. Maybe that was scheme fit. Maybe the coaches just didn't believe in it. I, I, I really don't know. And I, I don't have an inclination that. Oregon is going to go after this guy. I'm getting on here and saying the Ducks and Dan Lanning should be going after this guy. And there's one big reason why they need to. And I'll tell you, but first I want to tell you about Athletic Greens. If you want better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system, but you don't want to take pills and vitamins, go check out Athletic Greens. Greens. What is the stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, gluten free, whatever your diet is, this stuff fits into it and it will get you everything you need for better, better gut health and nutrition overall costs you less than three dollars a day you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than a cold brew habit they've got over seven thousand five star reviews to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase go to athletic athleticgreens.com slash college that's athleticgreens.com slash college college to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance was a little bit of a uh, of a mouthful there, and it can be a lot sometimes. So can those March Madness brackets, and gosh, do I love them. But when was the last time you or me or anyone you know went deep or made any money? I'm hedging my bets this year with Stat Heroes NCAA Pick'em Contests. Stat Heroes NCAA Single Game Pick'ems pits to star players against each other in an amazing hybrid between fantasy and sports gambling. The simple, sleek gameplay will have you playing in minutes. Sign up for free right now at stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. That's stathero.com slash locked on. Use promo code locked on for a 100% deposit match. Terms and conditions apply. So if you listen to my show from the other day, You remember, there are just two players on Oregon's roster right now listed as edge players. And that's a little bit concerning. We talked about with Ryan Winter yesterday. Maybe Brandon Dorless would shift over there. Maybe. It's possible. But some things would have to take place. He would have to slim down and and be learning a new position. I'd rather have a guy who's already comfortable out there and who's who's hungry to show that, that he can reach his potential, right? Because it's obvious after one season at Maryland, I think a lot of Terps fans, I would imagine, I haven't talked to any of them, but I would imagine they're probably saying, man, that was a big time recruit and he was just kind of 
around here and there, but he didn't get the playing time that allowed him, I think, to showcase his full potential, but he would be able to get that at Oregon. He's definitely best when rushing the passer, which is what this Oregon defense is going to need to be able to do. Any defense has to, but I just don't know where the pressure is going to come from right now. And if he was added to the roster, he would be just the second returning edge player who had multiple sacks last season, Braden Swinson being the other one. So there's not just an intrigue here, or there should be at least for Oregon because of the positional need, but also because he's a guy who, if he were to come to the Ducks and have success in his first year, he'd have three remaining years of eligibility. Because he was a true freshman at Maryland, he would get to play because of the one-time transfer rule. And I think he would slide in and be an impact player for the Ducks, or at least have a chance to uh, to push other guys. But I just don't know if Oregon's got the edge players who could match this guy's physical talent. And I think that it's the sort of guy who, you know, like uh, Jeffrey Bosser or Noah Sewell, I just want to see Dante Manning as well. I want to see so badly what this defensive staff can do with those sorts of players. Why I'm excited for the spring game, but also why I'm just, I, I, I can't wait for football, man. Absolutely cannot wait for football. So th- there's clearly a lot of potential. It's the sort of build and body type and, and athlete that Dan Lanning and Kirby Smart recruited down at Georgia and had a lot of success with, wrote it to a national championship, of course. And he was a big time recruit for a reason. That doesn't happen if you don't have the physical tools. And just because, it didn't work the way the Terps were hoping in his first year over there. And he's now leaving the school. Doesn't mean that Oregon could not be able or wouldn't be able to maximize his potential as a player. So there were other big, big 10 schools that wanted him. So it could be a hard sell, right? It is a Penn state. LSU was one of the offers as well. He's from the state of Maryland, but uh, Penn state, Michigan, Ohio state, it, it could be a really hard sell, but he's clearly looking for a change. And Dan Lanning is widely regarded as one of the best young defensive minds in the country. The staff knows how to recruit. And if they see this as a position of need the way I do, I think this is a guy who could certainly be one of their targets. So uh, let's switch gears here and talk Oregon basketball. And by the way, this is not a mailback question, but it's just good to remind you from time to time. If you ever want a question answered here on the show by yours truly for all the world to hear and see, as I discuss, there are three ways to do so. You can tweet with the hashtag ask LED pod, or you can just DM my personal Twitter handle. You see it down there on YouTube at smalls underscore 55 or at locked on ducks, which you should be following along on Twitter as well. And like, and subscribe to the channel or wherever you're listening to the show. So you can keep up every day, five-star reviews on Apple podcasts. Appreciate those and help out with the show big time. So Dana Altman has officially had his first departure from the 2021, 22 team. Now, after the disappointing end and not reaching the NCAA tournament and Dana Altman coming out, talking about the the culture and, and guys, but you know, basically indirectly saying that guys were not working as hard. I don't even know if it was indirectly, honestly. He talked about in that post-game press conference after the loss in the second round to Texas A&M and the NIT about how guys just weren't working hard enough. So I think that, you know, he he was definitely expecting guys to to leave, whether they're going pro or going into the transfer portal. Eric Williams told the Oregonian uh, that that's where I, where I first saw this. This according report from the Oregonian. It hasn't been officially announced, but it's – Uh, basically well-known that he's leaving the Ducks and he's going to test the pro waters. I don't know if he would be able to make it in the NBA. I could see him maybe getting on a G League roster. I mean, he's 6'6", 6'7". He can shoot. He's athletic. We saw him throw down some pretty good dunks this year on on lobs, particularly late in games. He can defend as well. So, you know, maybe, but I just don't know if the production is going to be there for an NBA team to give him give him a chance. But I can see him being a guy who goes to the G League for a couple of years and then finds his way onto a roster and maybe carves out a bench role. There, you know, if, if you can defend, you'd be a 3 and D player. There, There's always room for those guys in the NBA. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sure some of you out there watch Game of Zones. <laughs> I love Game of Zones. I miss Game of Zones. <laughs> There's one about uh, about Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan uh, selling Terrence Ross to the Orlando Magic. You have to look it up. I won't go through the whole thing, though I have it memorized because I've watched it that many times. So when I said 3 and D, that, 
that's uh, that that's what I thought of there. Um, so three and D player. So I think Eric Williams could be that, but we'll have to see how his pro career. Obviously, we wish him nothing but the best. He was a, a really solid player for the Ducks the last couple of years after transferring from Duquesne. And and by the way, if you see that school that's spelled D U Q U E S N E, that's Duquesne. It is not Duquesne. As someone who has a show that people actually watch, I feel obliged to just make sure that we're all aware that when we're talking about Duquesne, that's the school. And no, I didn't know that growing up either. I learned it a couple of years ago, but we all have to learn at, at some point. Uh, this past season for the Ducks, Eric Williams averaged eight and a half points, four and a half boards in 33 games played. He started 11. He was in double figures 16 times, helped the Ducks to another 21 season of course his numbers actually took a step back from what they were last year i think he was sort of a prime candidate coming into the season to see his numbers bump up a touch because you figure he has another year in the system another year of development guys tend to get better and their points per game tend to go up he's actually came down because over his career he averaged just under 12 points a game and a little under seven boards as well he only shot it 40 percent from the field he's a pretty good three-point shooter but you know, he's not the most efficient scorer. That's part of the reason why as a pro prospect in the NBA, I'd say, you know, does he have a draft pick potential? Probably not. But could he make in the G League? Yeah, I, I would say so. Just based on size and shooting and athleticism alone, he could probably do that. Uh, he was in Eugene for three years. He sat out uh, the 1920 season due to the no freebie uh, existing at the time. Right back in the back in the day. You had to sit out when you transferred, but now you get the you get the one time freebie. And he he did have one more year if if he had wanted it. So I think he'd clearly just had enough of college basketball. I don't think it's an indictment on Oregon or Dana Altman or anything like that. It would have been his sixth year playing college basketball. Like that's a long time. And remember, you have to go to classes in some capacity. And it's I think he's just at the point where he feels that that he's ready. Could he benefit from another year? Yeah, maybe, but he might have needed to go to a different situation where he could showcase his skills greater in order to potentially be, you know, a late second round draft pick at the best. But I don't think that he really projects as that. I think he could actually be a tough guy to replace for Dana Altman and the Ducks. And I'll tell you why after I tell you about Bilt Bar. You know that I love him. You know that I've got him in my golf bag. They are right in my Summit Mountain golf bag all the time. Summit Mountain, not a sponsor. I just thought of it anyway. Uh, but all Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. The Puffs included. The Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow, which are fantastic. I stick to the classics, but I've tried the Puffs, and gosh, they are good. But they're so good that I worry that I would eat too many of them, whereas the other ones... Still very, very good, and I hide in the pantry rather than keeping them somewhere dangerous, like in my room. 130 calories, four gram, 130 calories. That's how you do English, Spencer. Four grams of sugar, four net carbs, 17 grams of protein. Candy bars, way worse for you than that, but built Bars taste just as good. If you brought one into a movie theater, it would work. If you brought one on the golf course, it would work. If you want to go for a walk or a jog, it would work. They are 100% versatile, and you can get 15% off if you go to built.com. Use promo code lock 15% off your order. Promo code lock 15 for 15% off at built.com. Yeah, you really could have a built bar anywhere. You know, it's just it's one of those things. It's like uh, Dylan Brooks, positionless basketball player, built bars, the positionless snack. You could bring them anywhere that you want. Speaking of wings that have played for the University of Oregon and Dana Altman, Eric Williams Jr. I think could be kind of a tough guy to replace, right? At 6'7", there aren't that many guys at 6'6", 6'7", who, you know, rebound well, play defense, and can shoot. There's not that many. Sure, they exist all over the country, but every program only has, you know, like one or two who you say can shoot from beyond the arc, defend at a high level, and have a good length and athleticism in general. So was he a key player? For Oregon, is this just a huge, critical, crushing blow? The answer is no, but he's the sort of guy who I think is really tough to replace because in the traditional sense, he's not what you would call a high-impact player, but there aren't that many Eric Williams just sitting around in, in college basketball waiting to come to your team. And I, I say that not just because of his physical gifts, but also because of how he approached the game. He never demanded the ball, 
right? He's a big athlete. He was capable of creating his own shot. Didn't do it a ton, but never demanded that. He was, I would definitely describe him after watching him for a couple of years with the Ducks as a team player, right? He was willing to transfer and redshirt, or well, he had to sit out here because of the transfer rules. And he, he stayed committed, Dana Altman, and he, he feels it's, 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 it's his time to go pro. He was just about always playing off the bench. He made a few starts this year when Oregon had some, some injuries. But on, on the whole, he, he came off the bench, and he was always engaged. He was always playing hard. He, he's very much a team guy rather than being a, a me guy. You know, like, a, I, I need my touches, and I got to be doing this, or yada, yada, yada. No, I, th- I think Eric Williams – was a really good team guy with, with great versatility. He's a decent ball handler, but mostly a catch and shoot sort of guy who, you know, would, would, would do a lot of his damage from the corner, right? That's where he hits threes. And then he draws defense out, pump fake, drive to the rim. He's capable of dropping off an assist every now and then. So I, I just like the things that he did. And I always liked that he was able to come off the bench and putting him in the starting lineup every now and then. Also something I was confident in. And you list off all these good traits for Eric Williams. How many guys can you say that about in college basketball? There, there's not that many, right? Typically, they're on a team like a Virginia or a Villanova. I mean, Villanova is just a, a clinic of, of these sorts of guys in college basketball. They're just solid, fundamental, make the right play, be team players, work hard at the defensive end. And and play four years of college basketball. I mean, that's increasingly rare. Guys who are not ready for the NBA will will decide to go pro, even if they're you know going to go to the G League for a, a few years. Right? Is Ryan Winter and I were talking off the air yesterday. Sports Chat five hundred three. Check him out on YouTube and Twitter. Awesome, awesome guy, diehard Duck fan. And he was making the point about how hard it is now to coach in college basketball because when you recruit a guy. If he's a highly rated recruit, you have to recruit him as a freshman coming into Oregon. Then you have to recruit him as a freshman when he's at Oregon or any program in the country. Because if he doesn't play enough, then then he might leave, right? But Eric Williams, not that sort of guy, right? He left Duquesne because he had success there, felt he could have gotten to a, a bigger program and contributed in a significant way, which he did. But I never got the sense that he was you know, someone who, who, who was in it for the opportunity for himself. You know, I think he was a, a really solid team player. And I think that that's a hard thing to come by in college basketball is guys who are just going to come in. They're reliable. You know what you get from him. He'll give you, you know, six to 12 points in a game off the bench, hit a couple threes, make a defensive play and, and, and play within the structure of the offense. I think those are tough guys to come by nowadays in college basketball. So is it a crushing loss? No, but is it a loss? Yeah. I, I liked Eric Williams coming off the bench this year for the Ducks. And as I look ahead to the roster in 2022-23, I'm going to be asking myself, who's going to fill the Eric Williams role? Who's going to be a key bench player? Because Frank Kepnong was great off the bench, but you know it's different when, when you have a center coming in for Enfali Dante. Eric Williams was our best bench player this year, right? Especially as a ball handler, because Rivaldo Soares didn't do a whole lot and he did a little bit more at the end of the season when Will Richardson was sick and not playing very well. But on the whole, Williams was the most consistent guy off the bench because Frank had some up and downs that, you know, if you listen to the show every day, I love his potential in, in so many ways. So I just uh, I, I will be interested to see how that role is filled next year for Dana Altman and the Ducks, but wish nothing but the best for Eric Williams, who was a really solid player over the last couple of seasons. Speaking of players leaving, by the way, uh, Kelly Graves' team, women's basketball, will be very different <laughs> come next season. Uh, I saw earlier today as I record this, uh, Pow Pow will return, which is huge for the Ducks because Maddie Share, Kylie Watson, and Sydney Parrish, who were all five stars from the class of 2020, Oregon's top-ranked recruiting class in the country, they are all leaving the program. And Pow Pow is back. India Rogers, I think we're still waiting on her. Nyara Sobley is going to the WNBA. That's a lot of production. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot of, of production. And after Sobley announced, they kind of look at Watson and Cher and go, boy, seems like there might have been a void of production there that you could have filled. But they're, they're going to leave the program, and, and that's their decision. So both coaches will have some retooling to do for next year for different reasons. But Kelly Graves, phew, Boy, that's a that's a tall order there 
to to try and reload, but at least Tahina Pow Pow is back in 2022 and 23. I appreciate everyone listening. Have a wonderful rest of your day and go Ducks.